What's good, YouTube family? It's your boy S Crab Lens back again with another barber tutorial. And today we're gonna jump headfirst into this tutorial. And we are gonna do a high taper into some heavy bulk around the parietal ridge area. And we're gonna do it all clipper over comb and clippers. We're gonna do some shear work up top, but I started off wetting the hair, then I did my part from the corner of the box there, kind of at an angle towards the back. And that is to kind of keep a fuller back and give it the desired uh, shape that we're looking for. And I started and I know I'm moving quick, but we're gonna we're gonna have plenty of time to talk about this. But I, I started first by establishing my first guideline with the very fir first stroke of the clipper over comb right in that parietal ridge area. And my whole goal was to establish a guideline on how full I want the parietal ridge area to be, right? So it combs down, it gives us that nice part look. And all that is combed down, that's where I established my guideline to see this is where I want the blend to blend into. We don't want to go any shorter than that first guideline that I established. And then I come in and I hold my comb at an angle with the bottom of the comb closest to the head pulling out towards that parietal ridge area. So in essence, I'm shaping the angle instead of doing that eight uh, and then seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, all the way into the taper, which takes a million years and it's a pain in the butt and you don't really get a clean blend like you should. Um, you do clip over comb to make this happen. And whenever I was getting ready to cut her hair, I had uh, Juan, he came all the way from Orlando and he was hanging out just doing some, you know, just just watching me cut and hanging out, you know, at the shop doing some shadowing. And uh, and as he was doing that, he said, you're just going to do clip over comb, no guards on this. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. So I uh, just went ahead and, and decided to do that. But there again, I'm going to show you some different angles so that you can see what I'm doing better. And I skipped the taper on that side simply because I want you guys, uh, you know, I wanted to save time in the video. And as you've seen, whenever uh, you can see the angle that I created by just the way I held my comb on that side there that I already cut just like that. So I want it to be closer at the bottom. So I put the comb up against the head at the bottom where I know that I'm gonna be blending into right there. It's right on that edge. I wanna create a nice clean edge, but I see how I'm pulling my comb out. That's how you create shape. This whole haircut is done with that. I'll come in and I'll hit uh, you know, some clipper over comb in a horizontal position to maybe establish guidelines and then, you know, knock down some bulk. But then I will put my comb in more of a vertical position like it is right now. And I put it closer to the head and I simply pull it back as far as I want it to be uh, to create the shape that I want. So there again, right now, I'm just knocking down some bulk. I'm establishing a guideline and now in order to really now that i've done my vertical strokes uh now you know as far as with the comb and and the clipper now i have my comb more horizontally but i was doing some vertical strokes like right here because it gives me more control and the whole point of this is your comb is your guard right so i have to be the one to judge how far that comb is away from the head just like a guard would determine how far the the clipper is from the head so now that i've kind of established a guideline and kind of knocked down that bulk and created the shape that i wanted now i can come in at the bottom being i had the comb the the, the tip of the comb when it was facing down whenever i had it had it uh guys this is this is hard to explain man clip over comb is so hard to explain um but like right here see where i have the, the the bottom of the comb it's all the way up against the skin and that gives me a tight cut at the bottom a blend right it's giving me that that graduation that taper and being i had the comb so close to the head at the bottom then i could go in with the clippers at the bottom and set that uh, first guideline of the taper in the bottom with just an open blade. 
And then once I kind of got towards the, the top of that open blade guideline I established, I kind of just flicked out a little bit um, just so that way I know I have a little bit of room with my comb to get in there real tight to the head and, and start blending with clipper over comb. If that makes sense, guys, my mind is fried right now trying to figure out how to explain this, but we're going to get through it and I think you'll really like it. So let's just try to focus on the details as they come. So right now, once again, I have the clipper all the way open, no guards on this whole cut, and I'm just flicking at that line and making sure everything under the guideline we establish is uh, smooth with that open. And then we'll, we'll blend all that out in just a moment. But see, now I'm using that clipper over comb once again. The bottom of that comb, the thick portion, is tighter to the head and I'm pulling the, the, t the teeth of the comb towards me, putting it in the shape that I want the hair to go. Then I come in with there again, just flicking at that line, trying to knock some of that bolt down and I'll clean it up with you know, some shears and just a little bit as well. But as you can see, I'm using a lot of the corners of the blade and you seen a minute ago, I was using the teeth of the blade, just, just the corner mainly, and just kind of, you know, like chipping away at some of that heavy spot. That's more of a thinning shear action that you can use to really thin this thing out. Um, but yeah, just coming in with the corner of the blade, just tapping away, softening up, uh, you know, that guideline that we have. Now, as you can see, right on the occipital bone area, there's a nice dark spot because under that thicker hair, she has a nice pronounced uh, occipital bone, which creates a darker spot. It creates a shadow. So I'll come in and kind of chip at that with the uh, corner of an open blade here in just a moment. I'll, I'll also hit it more with the uh, with with the clipper over comb, but then I can come in with the shear over comb and even blending shear over comb and, and kind of soften that hard line up as well. So as you know, just like you would do any taper in a fade down technique, once I establish that guideline with the hat with the, the no guard open, then I just slowly started working my way down, closing the blade little by little until I was at uh, just the the bald where I wanted the bald line to be where I wanted the fade to end and then I grab my trimmers and I just come in and clean up that bottom now that I did a lot of the prep work I can come back in sharpen up those lines just like you would with a, a guard first and then hit the lineup to give it a nice crispy line I did all that with a uh, clipper over comb or uh, a thinning shear over a small comb and whenever I get in those really tight areas, you see that I've been using the big comb, but whenever I get in the tighter areas, like around the ear, uh, close to the line where I want to put a, a, a edge, then I'll go ahead and use a smaller comb with real, really, you know, tight teeth with a lot of teeth. So it, it grabs the hair better and puts more tension on it. And then I can use my trimmers to do that. So once I've kind of established a, a decent blend with clipper over comb, then I come in with shear over comb, which gives me a little bit more control. And I just work um, different angles, hitting different dark spots. And I just float that comb up and I just, you know, uh, keep the, the shears right there on that comb and just working it up. A lot of times you'll see I use the point of the blade to hit dark spots. I'm just trying to tap away at dark spots like right now that I see. But whenever I'm trying to, you know, really smooth that blend out in the heavier area, then you'll see I'll line up my shears on uh, the comb and, and do more of a broad, you know, uh, stroke on on that. But right now I'm just trying to really do detail work and what, you know, I'll hit the detail work and then I'll kind of swipe up and do a little bit uh, more bulk knocking off. And there again, because there's a nice heavy dark spot right in that uh, occipital bone area, uh, I'm taking a little more time to, to knock some of that down. And then as I knock it down, I'll see little spots and I'll come in and hit that with the tip of my shears. I'll come back and do more detail work, but here again, we're setting in the parietal ridge area. I'm holding it out at the length I want that area to be. 
and I have my comb facing horizontally and my strokes are horizontal just to really give it a nice clean uh, cut all the way through. Now I'm tilting my comb where the spine of my comb is closer to the head and the teeth of the comb is farther away from the head. So there again, I can create that shape. And as I work my way down, I get closer and closer to the head. Now that I established kind of that guideline, then I, I love to hold my comb in this angle because I can hold it at whatever angle I want and just go straight up the comb and knock out a whole bunch of hair in the shape that I want it, right? So when I get towards the bottom, right where I'm at right now, uh, where it's closer to the head and that's where I'm gonna be giving my, my uh, lineup, I, I take a little bit more time and make sure I touch that really, really gently uh, and to make sure we get a nice smooth cut. See, I wanted you guys to see from that angle when I was doing the back so you can see how I hold my my comb and, and how much hair is coming out and then I'm cutting off. Now, because I know I'm doing a high taper and that taper is going to come back at that angle that I'm working at, I'm holding my comb in that angle. And some of you guys are like, I have no clue what you're saying. I just wish you could get in my brain, but I'm doing the best I can to explain this. Without guards and all that, it's hard. And I know some people would say, why don't you use a white comb so we can actually see the hair when you're cutting it off and what length you're doing? Because I can't use white combs. It messes with my eyes too much. I have very sensitive eyes. Guys, sensitive eyes. And uh, I have to use black combs. And except for that hot pink or a red one, but the white ones tend to blind me and I can't even see what I'm doing when I'm looking at a white comb. So I use darker combs. But anyways, so right here, because I want more control in that tight blend area, I'm using a tight teeth comb. And there again, and over the ear and right where I'm gonna be edging up, I'm holding that at an angle. So at the right, at the, the top of her ear, I want that comb tied up against the head, but but towards the top of her head, I want that comb farther away from it. So when I cut up the comb, I'm actually creating the shape that I want. And as you can see with the taper, uh, we just went in and I once I created everything with clipper over comb, I just opened up my my blade and I just, you know, flicked into there, creating uh, that blend. And then I'm just touching it up with the corners of the blade. And, and once I created, uh, you know, the, the guideline with the blade open, I just shut it halfway and I'll tap at it. And then I shut it all the way and I tap at it. And this side I realized was a little lower than I wanted it to be in the taper area. And that's one of the, the things, if you're setting a guideline from the bottom and working your way up, you can set that bald guideline and then taper up. This is more of a fade down technique. I found it just works really uh, easy when I'm doing clipper over comb like this, being I'm already moving from the top down. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, I had to adjust that taper a little bit, but I'll come back in with thinning shear over comb and I'll go around the head and do all the details. I may or may not show you, I'm not sure. But now that we got, you know, the length the desired length that we wanted over the ears and by the back of the neck. Now we can come in and clean it up with our, our trimmers. Look at the shape in the back there. All that was done with clipper over comb. If you look from the front down the side, it has that same shape tight at the bottom and it just slowly blends uh, to thicker at the top. And you know, whenever you create your parts, you comb that down how you want it and you set that guideline you just you know taper right into it with clipper over comb makes life so much easier this haircut goes so much quicker especially not using any guards i can just open up my blade and flick right into that um, something you could try now this might be a, a a cut for a little bit more experienced people um Many people need guards and they need to work with guards, but I challenge you to, man, really work with clipper over comb because it will help cut down a lot of time, a lot of time. Juan was sitting there watching me, uh, Juan from Orlando, he was sitting there watching me and he was just like, dude, that is ridiculous. 
and it just saves so much time you know and then i can come in once i got the shape and i put a basic taper on there i could just come in you know with my shear over comb and now with my thinning shears to soften that you know that blend up hit any little spots that i need to hit and i can just come in with that all the way around the head touching up little things um you know if i see little areas you know, like right there over my hand, over my left hand, there was a little side where you can see that it was kind of sticking out a little bit. I'll knock that off right here with the, the my shear work. Now, once I created my parts uh, and combed everything down, and there again, whenever I create a part for this particular type of haircut, I like to start from that corner of the front box on the, the front lineup and i like to bring it back kind of at an angle more of like a not a v shape but it kind of U's in the back you can see how my part is <clears throat> in the back there and then i just pull that hair down and i just go ahead and hit it with my shears into the length that i established with a uh, clipper over comb pretty simple so this was a, a pretty quick haircut, even considering that I was recording, I was talking to Juan, I was kind of sharing some pointers with him. Juan came from Orlando to shadow. So if you guys ever in the area and you just want to come hang out and shadow myself, Basio, Matt Gifted Hands, any uh, Manny, any of the other guys in the shop, man, feel free. We love having guests and uh, you can ask us questions and watch what we do. I feel like it really encourages and inspires people to hang out with us. We're pretty positive people, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but anyways, now I'm just trimming the top and you guys can see how I do that and i didn't have time to blow dry it and style it and all that good stuff so i was like i'm so sorry girl i just i don't have time so i just went ahead i had another customer waiting i just do a little product in there uh, to give her something to go home with but we have more of that feather look and it just i feel like it falls really nice we did the tapers uh if we were to blow dry it man and and really be able to style that the way i wanted to the top looks like a hot mess right now but it's okay hey if you guys ain't following me on instagram make sure you go do that s period craft underscore blends and uh god bless you guys it's been real i'll see you next time peace